Welcome back to the 2019 Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championship here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am John Calchexis Kettler, and to my right is the one, the only. Kirk Dukes next to Bay. Good to be back with you for round three after that little chat. Um, pretty decent matchup. A lot of good ones to choose from this round. A uh, big powerhouse matchup on table one, Zach Lesage and uh, Caleb Gedimer. Uh, after taking a look at those lists, we thought it wouldn't provide maybe the most riveting viewing experience. Agreed. So uh, <laughs> we elected to pivot to a deck that is uh, at least a b another blast from the past, we'll say. It seems like I've been saying that these last two weekends More quite like a bit. like post-traumatic stress disorder for, uh, for Rowlett and Decidueye. <laughs> exactly right, exactly right. Tell me why that is, John. Uh, well, I, I know they're not over there. We can't speak too loud. Uh, but I'm, let, let's, I'm, let's drop the sauce a little bit. I'm down for a little bit of a history lesson. We'll just leave it in general terms. If you've actually seen it before, you'll know what I mean. But uh, a couple years ago, I was in the finals of a regional championship against a certain deck, which may or may not be uh, showing up again. And uh, I basically lost that series because I prized three of my four relic. And uh, luckily, this little dude, he was there. He was carrying the match for me as much as it could. But, you know, there's only so much you can do when you're just one one little rowlet. Absolutely. That is yeah. Alex Wilson. That's right. And he's actually here at the tournament, but he's using Blastoise. He, he is here at the tournament. Going off of uh, Mega Ray, he um, historically uses a torn uh, pseudo Udo roadblock in half oh as yeah. a GX marker, <laughs> um, which is funny because Mega Ray, not only is Rayquaza his favorite Pokemon, Mega Ray is uh, certainly his favorite deck and took a, a big regional win against the kid over here, prizing all three Rowlets. Yeah, but luckily Pseudo Wudo is actually a thing now, and so Roadblock can be pretty disruptive for a deck that needs to have eight Pokemon in play, so there's that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, Mike Newey is uh, one of our players here. Um, what do we know about Mike? Well, Mike is a also a former regional champion, has pretty good accolades to his own history as well. Uh, let's see what we have going on. What's he using for this round? Well, uh, if you if you hand me that sheet of paper that right fancy, there, that fancy fancy piece of paper here, and it looks like we've got Buzzwool. We uh, we do believe they've got their headphones on, so we're gonna good. Yeah, gonna, so we can go ahead and go straight we're gonna, into we're the excitement here. We're gonna talk here. as candidly as possible until we yeah. get the official confirmation. But um, Fair Mike Newey. Buzzwool, no GX, just baby Buzz, sledge right. sledgehammer swing around, um, and Garbodor. That's right, and I'm liking this matchup here. It, there's a lot of neatness going on, a lot of neat interactions where Buzzwool really relies on very efficient damage, not necessarily explosive 240 damage attacks, but it's able to whittle down big basics, big EXs, big GXs, and that's what it's looking to do here. Now, one thing that might be a little bit of an X factor is just that minus 20 resistance, and I'm interested to see if that actually factors in at all. Just keeping things, again, just as general as possible. We go down and we see some additionally efficient attackers, all non-GX again, so it really just comes down to can a big, fat EX Pokemon tank a bunch of hits? So, it can. Uh, there's one, though, that cannot, and that is Shaman EX, which finds itself all over the Mega Rayquaza deck. Oh, yeah. It is a staple of the Mega Rayquaza deck to really have those violently explosive turns um, to get that damage output going, because they yeah. want to fill the bench up, of course. Um, but at the expense of having a massive target on your bench. And correct. And your opponent is just like, okay, I'll go ahead and just bring that up and knock it out, and it's... As a matter of fact, really easy to knock out once you get the extra damage for Sledgehammer. Yeah, I'm just going to say, on that Sledgehammer turn, it's one strong energy away from uh, from just getting KO'd immediately and two quick prizes. So Mike probably going to try and leverage those Shamans that, that have to stick to the board. Uh, Noah needs to go through the paces and try and limit those opportunities and really focus Mike Nui onto those Rayquaza EX uh, Mega Rayquaza EX Pokemon that are fighting resistant, as you mentioned. Exactly. So, do our players have their headphones on yet? Still, still got to keep things a little general, or can we get into the, like the meat and potatoes? Um, I'm gonna get. Let's get in the meat and potatoes. Yeah. I, I, I think I think if we speak uh, quietly enough and we don't scream, I think we'll be all right. But let's, hey, let's everybody! Get He's using a rallet in his deck. So not that when we're actually talking about the contents, um, but take a look at Noah. What's he working with that might be out of the ordinary for uh, 
this Mega Rayquaza deck. Well, one thing I notice here that you really have not seen historically in that many versions of the Mega Ray list are two copies of Seismitoad EX, that really powerful, really efficient item locking card from Furious Fists. Just really straightforward 30 damage for two energy, two colorless, just lock the items. And I'm interested to see how that factors in here with Nui's efficient deck that doesn't really rely on a whole bunch of items, but it could be critical if it's timed at just the right moment. Absolutely. So Mike's deck built to not only uh, take advantage of Noah using items through Trash Lanch Garbodor, but also doesn't need to rely on items too much once he has his initial setup. So once he has his Garbotoxin Garbodor, once he has uh, Trash Lanch Garbodor set up, um, he can really pivot through um, really pivot through the Buzzwolves and right. pivot into the Garbodor Trash Lanches. And, and it looks like our players do have their headsets on and we are about to get started with the action here. Now we were talking earlier about Guardians Rising Pseudo Wudo with its roadblock ability factoring in. Unfortunately for Noah to the right, Mike is running a single copy of that Pseudo Wudo from Guardians Rising. So. If you're Noah, you're going to want to be targeting down that pseudo wudo ASAP, especially if you want to get up to those damage totals you need. But it isn't as big of a problem in this matchup overall because the trade-off in Mike running non-GXs is he doesn't have terribly high HP all around. Absolutely. Uh, and Noah has to know how to play against uh, Roadblock pseudo wudo uh, if, he's, if they've elected to take this, <laughs> this deck to this tournament. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Cook a couple cards down for Nui. Strong energy choice ban. Float zone on Trubbish. Uh, great start. And then an N. Um, Mike's going to get to see six new cards, and we'll be able to continue getting his board set up. Um, probably doesn't know that Noah has the opportunity to, to quaking punch him out of items, but... Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even know how well scouted out things have been for Mike Nui. I don't even know if he is aware of what Noah is playing, because... When you just see a Shaman on the board, it could be, well, any deck that runs Shaman. He could blindly assume it's a Night March deck. He could assume that it's some sort of Zoroark variant. So if you are Mike and you just have no idea what you're up against, you basically just have to make the best blind plays that you can that hedge your bets against all possible matchups. Noah Ultra Ball, going to throw away Metal Energy. Uh, that's going to be great for using Mega Turbo. Which is a, a quick way to get, um, obviously, a basic energy onto uh, your your mega Pokemon. Um, evolution through Spirit Link, all that good stuff. All those kind of key players in Noah's deck to make sure he can have a quick, efficient attacker built up and put together. And speaking of Blast from the Past, we are seeing several older cards all come into play. We've got... Who, the reason why all of those Pokemon are coming into play at once or going into Noah's hand at once is because he, it looks like he's getting a single copy of Hoopa EX with its Scoundrel Ring ability, which lets you search your deck for up to three EX Pokemon and put them into your hand. So Noah's just opting to bench all those, slow thing, er, speed things up a little bit, get everything all at once, and that way he saves a bit of time. Yep, Noah, great setup here. The Scoundrel Ring getting him some Rayquazas, puts down a Shaman Floatstone coming off that Shaman using the setup to draw back up to six cards. We are Spirit Link, Mega Turbo, DCE away from Knockout here. Yeah, although it seemed like the setup's either stuttering a little bit or maybe Noah's just trying to figure out the right sequence of his plays coming up. Mega yeah. Rayquaza does have the, I believe it's the, is it Delta Evolution or Theta Evolution? That That's allows right. it to evolve Delta. on the first turn. And he's getting another Scoundrel Ring going here, so keeping the chain alive. And the challenge here is when you have multiple cards in your hand that are unplayable, it's tough to decide whether you want to get more Pokemon to start con or continue your setup or just do something else. And I see him grabbing that Seismitoad EX from Furious Fist, so he might be eyeing the turn one Quaking Punch. Which would be a, a very strong way to pivot, kind of a, a, a flash in the pan surprise that maybe Mike Nui didn't know. Um, certainly will be ready for moving past game one. Um, Noah still digging for that DCE. I have not seen them come across it. Obviously, four copies of that powerful uh, special energy card in the deck. And as a matter of fact, I don't think I've seen a supporter go down. And I don't look in. F oh, and we just have the Mega Evolution. So while he does not have to wait a turn 
to do that due to that Delta trait at the same time he ends his turn because that is the Mega Evolution rule is that when you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, it, you end your turn unless you have a Spirit Link. And now Mike taking a look does run a major stadium that has been a linchpin of the single prize attacking decks of late. Shrine of Punishment, three copies. And Noah has initiated the, uh, the stadium war. That's correct. And so for you guys at home who have never heard of what it means to have a stadium war, so basically multiple players will run stadiums in their decks where your opponent might run some stadiums, you might as well. You only have a finite, a limited number of stadiums you can play. So sometimes you have to weigh the advantage of playing your stadium first versus the risk of your opponent ultimately getting to keep their stadium in play. So both of these players, they... I mean, obviously, Noah runs lots of Skyfields. He runs four. Real quick, John. Mike, I'll just Ultra Ball for Deancey. Beast Energy plus Choice Band plus Strong Energy plus Deancey. That's 130 minus 20 for resistance. That's a knockout, knockout. on Shaman. Oh, knockout. gosh. Knockout. knockout. Mike getting off to a rock and start. And Noah uh, paying the price of not uh, retreating with and that we've Shaman. we've got the Field Blower, too. Did I do the math right? 30 to 50 Strong Energy. 80 with Choice Band, 110 with Beast Energy, 130 with Deancey. I think, let's Sledge see. Sledgehammer for, for 110. 50, 80, 110, 130, 110. Yeah, I think your arithmetic's on point. And with that Field Blower coming down, that's a lot of pressure on Noah right now. So we were talking about the Stadium War, trying to get your Stadium in play. But Mike's main concern, while obviously it's a bonus to get that Shrine of Punishment into play, dealing little bits of damage to all those EX, GX Pokemon. Ultimately, what Mike cares the most about is keeping that bench limited. Now, I don't see a rush to that pseudo Wudo. I either might be in the prize cards, or Mike might be thinking, you know what, it doesn't really matter that much at this point. I don't know what his exact train of thought is here. But at any rate, there's a lot of pressure being applied. Noah having to play that first stadium of the game, having it discarded by the field blower, and getting these two prize cards. Correct. Now, Mike, maybe that pseudo Wudo being prized, but has elected to actually search out for Deancey and things of that nature. Uh, maybe, you know, obviously guaranteeing the knockout with the Deancey, uh, but might want to be eyeing up the pseudo Wudo here soon because, as we know, uh, Rayquaza's Emerald Break attack is 30 times the number of Pokemon you have on a bench. 30 times 4, 120. Baby Buzzwell's HP sits at a very nice 130. That's right. So a little bit off in terms of math if you get that Guardian's Rising pseudo Wudo in play with its roadblock ability. Big knockout there for Mike going down to four prizes. Noah promotes that Mega Rayquaza and just to keep pace, Noah needs to find a Mega Turbo, attaches DC for turn, which is step one, um, and needs to get another Pokemon on the bench. Just an N here for Noah. Really wants to hit a Mega Turbo, wants to hit another Pokemon on the bench. And if we're looking down here on the list, um, I do not see in Noah's list that Dragonite EX that found no, its way in no. these Rayquaza decks of, of uh, past, of days past, where it was able to pull two basics out of your discard. That's right. And so because Noah doesn't run a copy of that card, there's already even more pressure every single time that he loses a Skyfield because he loses Pokemon. And, I mean, effectively, we aren't relying off of a whole lot of cards here in order to get resources back. We've got that Rescue Stretcher, which is good. We've got that Super Rod, which is good. But Noah could at some point in this game, especially late game, be struggling to get just the one card he needs. Not right now, though, because he's going to be able to get that clean 150 if he needs it, and maybe even get a little bit of overkill to get another Pokemon to set up on his bench. 220 HP, fighting resistant. That's great, great number for Mega Rayquaza to have. Um, off that end, that Mega Turbo, Turbo, excuse me, coming right off the top. Um, Noah going to put down another Skyfield, I believe, off this trainer's mail. I don't know if that's considered playing it or it's going to go to hand. I like to see it go to hand because he's going to be down two Skyfields very quickly. Or maybe Noah's just getting everything out of his deck. Right, and actually, I'm also a little concerned about all of these item cards going into Noah's discard pile because at the moment, and you see a little, a little just double check here by the judge about that Spirit Link. Yeah, that Spirit Link did not come down. Going to go on uh, Rayquaza EX, uh, so it can be evolved into that Mega without um, ending the turn. Right. Now, the issue Noah has right here um, is that Noah 
doesn't have a fifth Pokemon on his bench right now. Um, I only count three, and that's 120. And I, that I, count, I count four, including the Seismitoad, but it's the same point. Your point's still the same either way, where it's just sitting there, and I'm waiting to see there actually being a benefit in having played that Skyfield. Definitely would have rather to computer search away the Skyfield, uh, keep the Versus Seeker for the following turn, and find that last piece of the puzzle that Noah needs to get a Pokemon on the bench. Um, Noah looking through finds an Alolan Grimer. So Interesting choice, uh, Alolan Grimer, to go into that Alolan Muck with the power of alchemy ability, shutting down a lot of cards in Noah's deck. That's right, but also shutting down some of his own abilities as well, Noah's that is. And so with a limitation on both of their abilities, it could go either way. I mean, we've seen this happen in other matchups before where because a player got an Alolan Muck into play, they ended up hurting their themselves in the long run. Mm -hmm. Noah just taking a knockout here with Emerald Break, uh, dealing 150 damage, using a computer search to find an Alolan Grimer. Not the most wonderful feeling, uh, especially when Noah played down pretty much what is effectively now a useless Skyfield since he didn't bench up past the five Pokemon. Yeah, and also with all those item cards that Noah played last turn, I'm feeling a little concerned about having, oh, and there's that roadblock, and Mike Mike was eyeing it. He was thinking about putting it down, didn't quite do it yet, and I think the reason why is because he's saving it for the best possible m moment, which is right now. So he had to double check, had to make sure that that was the right play. I think the hoop is an e easy pitch here. Uh, it's yeah. the only one that doesn't f further provide value or have potential value down the line. And, it's and, and it's used its ability. Exactly, and this is what Noah's clever metagame play here is in terms of running Power of Alchemy and Alolan Muck is to deal specifically with Roadblock Pseudo Wudo without having to waste time to knock it out. It's going to also carry a, um, a lot of weight uh, on other cards. For example, Diancie, as we mentioned, you know, that's a way to power up a Sledgehammer turn to take pretend, potentially a knockout on Shaman EX later down the line. Um, 120 is perfect to eat uh, Trash Lance Garbodor. Yeah. And also, to mention Power of Alchemy, shutting down Diancie, Roadblock, and in this case, Oranguru. Right, and so even, but even with all these abilities getting shut off, I like Mike Newey's odds right now because, again, of all these items that Noah's been playing, so he's already got that one Garbodor Trash Lance just eyeing something to knock out. It's a little bit harder now with all those beefier EXs in play, but I mean, I haven't been keeping perfect count of the items here, but it looks like there's a lot in Noah's discard right now. Uh, so we're going to have tons of shrine damage ticking through. Uh, we've got a quick item count. The rescue stretcher's already gone for the game, and Noah's has a single card in hand, 190 damage on the Rayquaza. Going to be able to take a knockout, uh, but won't be long for this world. And the third Skyfield going down, so Noah's feeling the pressure, but I think that Mike is too to an extent, so he has to have that counter to respond immediately. Noah just announcing Emerald Break, taking another knockout. Deancey find its way in into the active, and it's Sledgehammer turn. That's right, and if I'm Mike, I am a little torn on just the best order after Sledgehammer, but I can definitely see an argument being made for leading up with another Garbodor Trash Alanche if you can pull that off. You still need the Rainbow. You still need the Garbodor itself. That's a lot of damage right on the board. I mean, we're already at a minimum 180, so that's going to be two easy prizes once Mike's actually able to pull that off. But this is a two easy prizes right here as well. I saw Mike draw up to, I believe, six cards, which leads me to believe it was a Lily that was played down, uh, despite us not actually seeing it go to the discard. Um, Noah, I, y there's, there's two critical points in this game where Noah really gave Mike the opportunity to uh, press this advantage. The first one being not retreating out of that Shaman and giving up that really easy knockout. The second one being the sort of misplay putting down the Skyfield and not just computer searching it away to get what you needed and having a follow-up versus seeker because now Noah is literally living off his prizes right now. Correct. And so now with that big mega ray knocked out, it's all pressure on Noah to be able to follow that up yet again, being able to get the Pokemon that he needs. And I see this Alolan Grimer coming up. I interpret that as a defensive play, especially with such a small hand right now where if he wanted to knock something out, he would have to 
draw a whole bunch of stuff and get a whole bunch of stuff into play. Exactly. So I think this is just going to be a sacrificial Grimer right here. Maybe get Poison off. Noah, very fortunately, uh, in the two cards off the prize and off the draw, finds a Trainer's Mail, which fortunately, again, finds a Versus Seeker. So Noah gets to, uh, to play on, and I believe that is an N from Noah. Going to draw four cards, needs to find, uh, what, Floatstone, Mega Ray, DCE, and hopefully a follow-up. See, uh, and I don't get me wrong, I like the decision to bring up that Alolan Grimer because if the worst possible things happen, then he's at least losing a non-GX Pokemon, non-EX, and isn't going to be knocked out of the game. Remember, Mike only has two prizes, but we see that Alolan Muck. We see, looks like a Spirit Link, so he's he could technically pull off Power of Alchemy, but that would not be ideal. And the Alolan Muck would be hit straight in the face. So. Yeah, that uh, that Alolan Muck would just be uh, catching catching a fade right there. Uh, Noah having Battle Compressor in hand, choosing not to use it, maybe not to power up Trash Lanch any further, um, because as we know, it did hit for I believe it was 180 with a Muscle Band right now, currently on the gar uh, excuse me the Trubbish on bench. A Trash Lanch with another item would be uh, pretty good numbers there. Oh yeah, although I mean at this point. Seems like the numbers are already pretty good for Trash Alanche, and now it's just a matter of time if Mike's able to find the right card combo he needs. So there's the Rainbow, and eventually all he will need is just a Garbodor Trash Alanche and some way to get okay. one of those bench Pokemon into play. Exactly. So Mike playing pretty quick. Rainbow Energy down, Rescue Stretcher for Garbotoxin, or excuse me, for a Trash Alanche Garbodor, uh, and just announcing an attack. Oh, and having to double check, it looks like he... Still on four prizes. Still on four prizes. Still a so. sledgehammer yep. turn. Up comes Mega Ray and Trash Alanche is on the ones and twos. No one needs to scoop it up. Let's go to game two. Good call. Good call to go ahead and scoop it because actually this is ideal to finish three games in right now because we have best two out of three 50 minutes. That took about, oh, maybe like 16, 17 minutes to finish. You have that happen two more times then you could theoretically have your Mega Ray comeback. Absolutely. So it was just under 34 minutes when it kicked back over to us in the booth here. Um, what does Noah need to adjust to have the opportunity to, to push this to a game three in this next one? Win the stadium more. Be more conservative. Just don't dump as many items as possible. Be really judicious about the items you're playing. I, In addition to what you were feeling about the Skyfield play being too premature, I also feel like maybe that computer search was a little too premature as well because that ended up dumping about two items in its own right. So I feel like Noah just wants to be careful and cover all of his bases. And those bases are limiting items, being a little judicious about when you're walking in the sledgehammer, and, of course, keeping yourself controlled and maintained so that Trash Alanche doesn't just like, smack you in the face. Some lessons are best learned in the moment. Um, in Game 1, Noah navigating now has a, a much firmer understanding of what Mike knew he's doing, knows that Roadblock Pseudo Udo can come into play, knows that he has to pay attention to Trash Alanche Garbodor, understands that there's a lot of damage-boosting effects in Mike's deck that can pick off an early shame and get those out of the active and on Mike's side I'm just I just want to rinse repeat the same game plan yeah and you know what now Mike is coming into the second game with an even bigger advantage than the first game because every question mark that he might have had is now gone so he didn't even see that Alolan muck until like midway through the first game right so that was knowledge he may or may not have had he might have not really messed around with Mega Rayquaza that much might not have known that such a thick line could be played in the deck. Oh, and looks like we're back into it. So just a mirror start from last time. Floatstone, Rayquaza. Uh, Flo this is actually almost a mirror image. Just Noah going first. Scoundrel Ring. Um, Noah has uh, the copy of Floatstone. He runs two. Fortunate enough to find it this early. Really needs to get that Shaman out of the active. Yeah, and I'm interested if Noah already has in his mind every single part of this turn planned out because... That floatstone going down so early seems a little suspect. I just want to see what he's planning to do here and why he wants to commit to that so soon. Uh, Mega Ray goes into the discard along with two Ultra Balls. Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball, um, yeah. Mega Ray. And uh, Alolan Grimer coming down. Noah saying, this is what I need to have a good run today. I need to get Alolan Muck going on turn two. Right, and we definitely didn't see that the last game. 
Malol and Muck never really came out until the second to last turn of the game, as a matter of fact. And the best that it did was just be a sacrifice to Almighty Buzzwool. Shaman's going to set up for one, two, three, four, five. So back up to six there. Yep, and there's our justification for the early floatstone is thinning your hand out to get more cards for Shaman, but still lots of items going down, and it puts Noah in a very similar situation to last game. Battle Compressor going to uh, put some metal energy. Uh, I did see a Mega Turbo, so probably wants to make sure that's squared up for next turn. Um, just two metal energy off Battle Compressor. Would you have liked to see maybe uh, if the Karen was still in the deck, the Karen go away, or... You know, clearly that's something Noah can use to his advantage to shover, shuffle his Pokemon back in to, you know, rebuild his board state. Um, but kind of a wonky draw at this stage of the game. And it doesn't impact the items. What do you think about that? So just to be clear, you're asking whether the Karen was even an ideal investment in the first place? No, should have should have battle compressored it away. Battle compressed it well, away. Well. I, I can see a good argument for battle compressoring it away because I, in, in super, super simple terms, I agree. Maybe expanding on that a little bit. Yeah, like it's not really adding a whole bunch of value, and you still have VS Seeker as an option. Although, on the other hand, it's nice to hard play Karen without using a VS Seeker because A, you want to save those, and B, I've been just hammering this over and over again. You want to try to be conservative with your items if you can be against this matchup. Great point. Noah putting down Mega Ray, ending his turn effectively because he did not have the Spirit Link down. Over to Mike. We see the Rainbow Energy come down on the Trubbish. Um, Noah leaving the Shaman in the active, which is fine this time because Mike won't get two attachments, so he can't go strong beast like he did last time. Um, so Noah feeling much more comfortable with Shaman right now. And there's that Nest Ball tucked away in the hand as well as a couple Ultra Balls. So Mike actually has plenty of options as far as how he can set up this turn going into Noah's. Now, this is not an explosive turn, obviously, for Mike. That rainbow attachment should have clued you into that because all that Mike could do as far as attacking is just Acid Spray. That's not really an effective use of your resources to attack that way. So that's signaling to everybody this is not going to be the explosive turn. Mike's just like, you know what, I'll go ahead and wait, get my board prepared, and just move from there. I want to see if he's going to get that early pseudo Wudo or not, though. I wouldn't mind it, um, pseudo, especially because, like you said, it's a less explosive turn. Um, it does potentially allow your Buzzwool to remain another turn. It forces Noah to have to prioritize an Alolan Muck, amongst other things, uh, to take a one-hit knockout this turn. And Noah not playing any uh, Guzma cards None in this at all. to pivot um, and chase that Trubbish on the bench um, and make it an easy retreat. So that Floatstone going to be imperative to pivot off of, especially with Lysander, um, as Noah's gust effect of choice. Although, you know what? I think I like what Nui's setting up here right now by getting the Oranguru, just as additional draw power with Instruct, because you're still putting the pressure on your opponent to get out that Alolan Muck, shut off Instruct, and make it harder to draw cards. But give yourself a little bit of consistency and save that pseudo wudo for labor and save the rest of your resources, as a matter of fact. Three more items going to the discard. Um, finding a Shaman. Noah has the Mega Turbo in hand. This might be uh, an attempt to chase a Shaman for, uh, for five or six. Oh, an interesting point I just wanted to bring up. It looked like the judge flipped that die that's near the, front, the top of your screen that was on top of the sky field, now right above it. That's the judge and both players trying to keep track of the number of item cards in Noah's discard pile. And we are currently up to seven, so that trash alliance doing a minimum of 140 damage. Uh, Spirit Link coming down on Rayquaza. I don't see a DCE in there, and if Noah missed, that is not good. No, Alolan Grimer coming down. And we see two Alolan Grimer right now. That kind of suggests to me that yeah, this is a pretty wimpy turn as far as being able to get out of evolved Pokemon. I don't even I don't even see a Lolan Muck. No Lolan Muck in sight. No DCE. A uh, a, a whimpering retreat into a Lolan Grimer, and Mike needs uh, gets another turn to operate unimpeded. Juniper gonna come down, pitching a rescue stretcher, and I believe maybe another Juniper based on the corner of the art there. Um, Mike gonna see seven, and I think the beast energy found its way into his hand. I don't see. I see the rainbow. It could be the beast. It could be the strong. And we got field blower going down for a couple more items. L well, looks like the judge and the players 
should immediately, yep, they might have even done it right on cue. But yep, they're adjusting the item count, and we see another rainbow going down. So Mike did not hit one of those. He needed either a strong energy or a beast energy if he wanted to play a little aggressively here in Sledgehammer for a knockout. Noah counting up, putting two metal in the discard, has another Mega Turbo. Uh, so that gets him one step closer to finally being able to announce, um, excuse me, able to announce uh, Emerald Break. However, Noah needs to find a Floatstone to get his Pokemon out of the active because, as we mentioned, he does not play a Guzma. That's correct. And without that Guzma, all he can do as far as gusting is Lysander. He can't make these little cute plays where he just surprises his opponent. Oh, okay, I'm switching out and knocking out something important of yours at the same time. So even though both of these players are at a stalemate for now, it's at the same time not terribly favorable for Noah. So everything is going wrong for Noah right now, even though nobody has drawn a prize yet. Right. Mike uh, putting down Colrus, leveraging the fact that Noah has a full full bench of seven Pokemon. I guess Skyfield allows you to, to put down eight. Uh, but regardless, Nui with a enormous Colrus um, finds uh, Roadblock Pseudo Udo, Rescue Stretcher, uh, Trash Lanch Garbodor, Shrine. The Shrine's bands. nice, but as far as actual offensive options go, it's not that much right now. Although, to be honest, I don't really know if he cares. No, he's, he's on the single prize game. Uh, looking at those items, there's already nine in the discard. Choice band, you know, that gets you up to 210, 210 damage. A shrine tick, that, that's 220. Factor and resistance, 200, but look at all those rake losses. Although we've got the floatstone coming down, so if he wanted to go aggressively here, he could. But again, all it is is an Alolan Grimer. Are you gaining what you're giving? So... So Noah going to get a Roadblock Pseudo Udo coming down, going to lower Noah's bench to four. Um, Mike is going to be able to deal some big time damage with that Trash Lanch Garbodor. And literal damage with the Shrine of Punishment too, or I guess you could say damage counters. Mm -hmm. Got to be specific there. Mike taking a look, considering pitching his own Roadblock Pseudo Udo after bumping the Skyfield uh, because he had six Pokemon on bench. Retreat, and Mike says, I'll take a knockout. Yeah. A applies a little bit of pressure on the Alolan Muck front at some point while finally drawing a prize and breaking the stalemate we had from earlier. A uh, good look for Mike. He does have Rescue Stretcher in hand, which we saw him draw off that Colrus. So if this Garbotoxin, or excuse me, if this Trash Lanch Garbodor does get knocked out, um, he can just stretcher it back. As we know, the Rainbow Energy is down on the Trubbish. Evolve, take a knockout. That's right, and there's that all-powerful Seismitoad EX coming oh, down. Roadblock, roadblock. Yep. There we go. S yep, and so maybe that order might not have been the optimal way to do it, maybe just assuming that he still had that extra space. Good catch by the judge, immediate catch. We've seen situations before where roadblock did not get factored in right away, so good playing all around as far as what we've got with that roadblock. And Noah's still eyeing that alone in luck. Not sure if he is just drawing very poorly off of it or if it's in the prizes either way it's not looking too good noah playing in the n not gonna not gonna hinder mike too too much he is gonna get draw five cards off this which for him is perfectly okay um he's initiating contact here so guzma lily strong energy on nui side noah needs to see a dce there's there's a quite a few things that Noah wants to be able to maybe mega turbo like Set a, start setting up a backup attacker. Floatstone coming down on the hoop, but we'll give him the option to pivot. Yeah, and actually, I, I, f I feel like that Floatstone play right now is a little bit better. Probably okay, because the single copy of Field Blower and Nui's list has already come down. So Noah's like, okay, I can go ahead and just play this, and it's probably not going to get discarded unless you're playing some sort of card I did not see game one, so... He has a pretty good feel for what Nui would be running, and it's probably not like Faba or a second field blower. Noah looking at his discard, taking a look, wondering what was in there. But without a DCE, this is kind of a non-starter. Oh, and the hard, hard retreat. retreat. Ouch. Into Power of Alchemy. That Power of Alchemy, Alolan Muck saying, I need a turn. Yeah, but even that, I like it really doesn't help that much because 
when you were drawing prizes off of GX Pokemon, you need twice as many, They right? They give two prizes instead of one. As but, we mentioned, Mike did draw the Guzma. Target and we've Center got Mega a Rayquaza. big trash for 210. With those two Shrine Ticks uh, excluding resistance, uh, or excuse me, including the resistance, just enough to take the knockout there on that Mega Rayquaza. Mike Newey down to three prizes, and Noah still trying to get out of the starting blocks. Yeah, and now, uh, granted, having that Floatstone hedged his bets a little bit in case something got in, if his hand got in, and then he needed to free retreat. But the problem that Mega Rayquaza suffers is that it needs to hit a lot of cards to work. And that's why you see these lists running four copies of Shaman EX to draw lots of cards, because you need to hit a Spirit Link, you need to hit a Double Colorless Energy, a Mega Turbo, a Mega Rayquaza, all of those things all together. That's four different cards. And in order to get to that point, Noah's going to be giving up a lot. N to six here. Noah needs to find Spirit Link, Mega Turbo, DCE, Mega Rayquaza, and that's that's just a, that's just to keep playing, that, uh, right? Just to keep playing, and he would need two knockouts on two Trash Alliance Garbodor just to hedge his bets in terms of not flat out losing the game. Noah doing Mike a favor, counting some uh, some items out. We did see the Spirit Link come down, but not a whole lot after that. Trainer's mail might unlock uh, part of this. Uh, that's a Mega Turbo right on the top, I think. And However, Ultra Ball there's too. no Mega Rayquaza to evolve to just yet. So if Noah has enough resources overall, so it looks like he's... I, I don't think he's getting anything there. Electing to fail it, uh, maybe just to get a card out of his hand. Power of Alchemy is alive, so uh, Shaman EX not going to bring a lot of mileage to the table aside from being a squishy two-prizer. And here's how everything can come full circle in the game because we were having a little sidebar about whether or not to discard that Karen with the Battle Compressor thin out your deck. It is sitting in Noah's hand right now. So theoretically, had he discarded that Karen with his Battle Compressor, he might have thinned out his hand even more. And so he's flirting with the idea that Hoopa, but he's remembering again that Roadblock's in play. Let's talk about Roadblock. Although quick. a Lolan Muck power about yeah. he's got things Hoopa, going, so Hoopa that's would, he, has the, he has the bench space. Hoop would have come down uh, Scoundrel Ring for no value. Um, unfortunately for that, we are here. Um, Noah had just another unfortunate turn. Maybe that's why I didn't choose anything off of the uh, trainer's mail. And now Noah's just kind of stuck facing down a Trash Lance Garbodor that can hit for 220 damage. And Mike just cruising to the finish line right now as Noah has completely sputtered and been able to get nothing going. Exactly. And meanwhile, and it looks like we've got the the handshake there marking the concession. And it looks like Mike Newey takes this 2-0. Mike Newey does take this 2-0. Um, so we can bring it back to the booth and have a little uh, post-game discussion here. Man, <laughs> I, I got to admit, you know, I felt like that first game, there was a decent chance for Mega Rayquaza to pull it out. And, you know, the matchup doesn't really seem all that bad. It's just you have to get the right cards in the right order. And, again, the biggest issue, I think, for Mega Rayquaza is its reliance, arguably over-reliance on items. A huge reliance on items. Um, never seemed to fall in the right order uh, during nope. that game, uh, unfortunately. And Mike just kind of waited him out. Yeah. It was just like, all right, Rainbow Energy on Trubbish, Rainbow Energy on Trubbish, Trash Lance Garbodor is where I want to be. And only once uh, he found the float zone off that Colorus for 9 or 10 or whatever it was, um, was able to go, okay, I'll initiate contact now. I've got a great hand. Um, even if you end me, I'm still going to 5. So uh, able to build up that, uh, that lead from there. A couple missteps in game one, unfortunately, for our Mega Rayquaza player. And uh, that led to uh, a swift 2-0 defeat here round three Greensboro. That's right. And in a little bit, we will be interviewing Mr. Mike Newey himself, the winner of round three. So stay tuned. 